now as we implemented the gate method in the previous session now let's do the testing of that gate method to check whether it is working properly or not so along with testing we'll also learn how to do the error handling and how to do the debugging of the rest api so for testing as we have to pass a url to a third party system and here for the testing i don't have any third party system so i'm going to use this the postman tool which is used by used for the testing purpose so this postman tool i'm going to use so how to identify the url as every sap server has the ip address so the url we have to form in this format the http or https colon slash backslash domain name that is either we can use a domain name or that will be ip address colon the port number which will be given by the basis consultant followed by slash z trace underscore so this z trace underscore so will be from the sicf node which you have done in the step number four okay we have to write here z rest underscore so let me log in again so in the sicf we have created the sicf node as z rest underscore so so after the port name backslash we have to use z rest underscore so that is the sicf node slash so what is this so this is the template number which we have given inside the handler class here inside the handler class we have used this template and this case sensitive if you have given capital letter here the url also use the capital letter if you are using a small then there also you have to use the small letter so this is till here till the question mark this is the format of the url after that we have to pass the sap client and as i am passing the sales order number from the url and we have used the parameter name as the vpeln that's why here i am passing the vpeln as a parameter name so let's do the testing for this url through the postman tool so once we are doing the postman tool in our work let's add a request I'm using the get request, get the request name as get so details, enter the URL here. Sorry, not this, I have to change here my node as set rest underscore so followed by slash so. This is the VPLN, IP address port. SICF node template and the cell order number in the authorization tab here we have to pass the user ID and password I have already set my user ID password here so I don't have to pass that again save and then click on the send button after adding the SO number and giving the user ID password click on the send button yes you can see the output here as per the structure which we have created. You can see the cell phone number, the customer ID, all details. You can see all the line items. And for each and every line item, we have here the item condition. So you can see here, we can, uh, we are getting here, I think around 20 or 30 line items. Yes, we have 30 line items. Let me show the same cell phone number into the SAP system. Go to VA03. We can cross check the data here for this order that is 138. We can see the customer is 5 9 times 0, and we have three line items. We can cross check the data here 5 9 times 0, and we have three line. The first line item is ending with 4. This is the first line item. Do click on this. And check the conditions. Here we have Z bus as the replace 10. We have to convert this by passing. This will do the end of coding. This is the 10 rupees and the Z bus condition. 
and here we have the quantity as L1 and M3. Check again whether we have the quantity as L1. Yes, we have the quantity as L1 and the unit of measure is M3. So this means that whatever coding we have done, it is working perfectly fine. Just we have to do some changing. We have to do some modification for this conditional record. As for the second line item, it is showing as the 157.50. So let me check what is the condition value for second. So here we have 25. So we have to do some multiplication division, but remaining all data is perfect. Okay. I think it is showing the complete value that we have to take care. Now, here that is anyway it's coding part that we can change anytime. But concept understanding is very important. So we can see here the concept is working perfectly fine based on the SO number which we have passed. System is giving the response. Now let's do the other part that is error handling and the debugging. Now assume that if you pass the wrong SO number here instead of 138. I'm passing let's say x is x. So what will happen? We're not getting any response here. It is still the state is 200. So in this case, what we want, if the sales order number is not found or it does not exist, we want that system should pass a message. So how to achieve that? For this reason, if you remember, I have added one message field in our original structure. I have added one message field. So if the sales number is not found, we we'll just pass a message here in this field. For that, again, go back to our resource provider class and inside the get method, what we'll do, we'll add this else and if before our serialization concept, In case, suppose the sales order does not form, if here the VP, aka VP ELN is initial, the system is not able to find out that sales order number, just pass a message here as GS underscore SO message. You can give any message based on our requirement. Sales order does not exist not necessary we have to pass our message only in this structure we can even pass the message into other structure also fine and this is for the main line item so here also we will use the else statement I didn't know this also we have to move at the top side. And here I will pass. Finally enter the cell phone number. Finally enter the sales order number. So check activate no error. So what I done in the first step we are checking you are a parameter with lv underscore vbln if system found a sales order number this will do all the required operations if system has not found any sales order number in the ur parameter this will give the message as kindly enter the sales order number the second scenario is system has <coughs> found some sales order number but it is not valid so in that case after reading it from the vp ak table if system has not found the valid sales order number it will give the message as sales order does not exist. Now let's test again. Go to the postman again and pass send the same request. Now this time we can see the message here as sales order number does not exist. Now let me remove this complete parameter name. I'm removing from here. And again, send request. This time we can see kindly enter the sales order number because we have we are entered the kindly enter sales order number in the first block. 
and if the sales order number is passed but it is not valid, system will get this message. So this way we can do the error handling. The third, let's do the uh, let's learn the debugging. How to do the debugging of REST API? So whenever we want to do uh, debug the REST API in our coding block, we have to set the external debugger. Place the cursor here or at the place where you want to put the debugger and click here. Set external breakpoint. Once we set the external breakpoint. Now this time I'm going to pass the actual extra number send. So we can see here the debugger is started. Now system has read the SO number. Go on F6. Here system is reading the header data, line item data, condition details. This is overall the conceptual knowledge. Based on real requirement, the coding will completely change. But the higher level understanding is important. How to read the UR parameter, how to add the data, into, uh, convert the data into JSON, how to set the response. We can see here three line item. Let's put a second breakpoint here. Press F8. So initially, system has created the deep structure. That is the header detail, line items. Inside the line items, we have condition tables. Now, after serialization, system is converting that data into the response, that is the JSON format. And then finally, system is setting the response. System is giving the response to a third party system. Okay, so in this way, we have done with the test with the implementation of get method as well as testing of the get method through the postman tool in the next section we'll do the post method that is creating of sales order from the request so we'll use the same data we'll use the same data same request data in the post method to create the sales order so instead of get method we'll use the post method to cover our last step so till six step we have done here. Next we'll see the creation of post meter and testing to post meter. That we'll see in the next session.